today. And we love seeing these two planes here, too. Our son flies the F-35, and our son-in-law son -in -law flies the Super Hornet. So it's great to be here today. It's exciting for us. and hello, Lamar. <laughs> to Captain Doug Peterson, uh, Captain Aiden Jason Covarubias, Captain uh, Bobby Markovic, all the men and women of the Armed Forces of the United States gathered here, honored guests. Thanks for the warm welcome. Thanks for the flight jacket. It is great to be here with the sailors at the Navy's West Coast Master Jet Base, Naval Air Station Lamar. As my wonderful wife said, it is great to be back in strike fighter country. Before I begin, I want to ask you to join me in thanking someone who has uh, literally spent the last four years showing our appreciation for people like that. traveled the nation and traveled the world, coming alongside military spouses. She supported reforms in, in the laws concerning and regulations concerning military spouse employment. In fact, as you just heard, in a few minutes she'll be speaking to spouses right here at NAS Lamore. And I, I got to tell you, I couldn't be more proud of my incredible wife, who I think is the best second lady the United States has ever had. Will you join me in thanking Karen Pence for all she's done? for our troops and our families. Thank you. I got to go. Thank you, dear. Get I'm here to deliver a very simple message to each and every one of you. On behalf of your commander in chief, from your vice president, and on behalf of every American. Thank you for your service. After traveling across this country over the past 4 years, I promise you, the American people are more grateful for your service than you will ever know. You come from the rest of us, but we know you're the best of us. And we're grateful, not only to those of you who wear the uniform, but as we've mentioned a few moments already, 
We're grateful to all who stand beside you. You know, so many of you serve every day as a family. And while you train and while you deploy, it's your wives, it's your husbands, it's the parents who keep the home fires burning, isn't it? And as Karen said, we know what we're talking about. As most of you know, our daughter Charlotte and our son-in-law Henry are stationed right here at NAS Lamar, and we couldn't be more proud. Our son is a Marine Corps F-35 pilot, and he and his wife are stationed in Arizona. And like so many of you, they serve as a family. So uh, as we express our appreciation to each and every one of the men and women gathered before me and all you represent, how about a bigger round of applause for all the family members who support all of you who serve the United States of America in uniform? Let's hear it. It's inspiring to look out and see all of you today. And it's remarkable to think of the countless American heroes who have stood where we're all standing today. Over 60 years, warriors have come here, trained here, gone out from here and deployed to every place and every corner of the world. This installation is the only master jet base of the United States Navy and serves all operational Pacific Fleet strike fighter squadrons. You host 16 operational strike fighter squadrons, two fleet replacement squadrons, one search and rescue squadron, and four West Coast carrier air wing commanders and their staff. I'm actually told on average more than 210,000 flight operations are conducted right here from Naval Air Station Lemoore every year. Give yourselves a round of applause. That is an incredible history and tradition of service. Now, two air wings from NAS Lemoore are currently deployed. Carrier Air Wing 11, I'm told, is deployed aboard the USS Teddy Roosevelt. Nine squadrons, including the Blue Diamonds and the Black Knights, stationed here at NAS Lemoore. And Carrier Air Wing 17 is deployed aboard the Nimitz. It includes a total of nine squadrons, including F-18 Super Hornets from here at Lemoore flown by the Red Cox, the Kestrels, and the Mighty Shrikes. So how about a big round of applause for all the NAS Lemoore squadrons deployed around the world. We are proud of you all. You know, the men and women of Naval Air Station Lemoore soar across the skies in defense of our nation and our freedom. You inspire us every day. Many people wonder all their lives if they've ever made a difference. You'll never have that problem. And the truth is, you step forward, you join the armed forces of the United States, and you became a part of the greatest force for good the world has ever known. You chose to do your part in your time to defend the flame of freedom and hand it on to generations yet to come. And the American people are great. You know, the Bible says you did not love your lives so much as to shrink from this calling. And I want to assure you, you have our deepest respects for the selflessness and courage that you personify every day. For four years, I've had the honor of being Vice President of the United States. And since the first day of our administration, We've worked every day to make the strongest military force in the history of the world stronger still. Four years ago, we inherited a military that had been hollowed out by devastating budget cuts. Our troops hadn't seen a significant pay raise in nearly 10 years. Our military lacked equipment at a level that was actually impacting readiness. And our NATO allies weren't meeting their commitments to our common defense. Iran was resurgent across the Middle East, and a terrorist organization controlled a land mass the size of Pennsylvania. But I couldn't be more proud to stand before all you heroes today and report. Under the leadership of President Donald Trump, we've rebuilt our military. We've restored the arsenal of democracy, and we've enacted the largest increases in our national defense 
since the days of Ronald Reagan. We're once again giving our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard, and Guardians the resources and the support that you deserve. And we provided for our active duty personnel the largest pay raise in nearly 10 years. And you deserve every penny. Our military is now more equipped than ever before. Under our administration, we've secured nearly 500 new F-35 fighters, 21 more deployable ships, with another 59 on the way. We've upgraded our tanks, our artillery, our rocket systems, bolstered our fleet of attack helicopters and broader fighter planes as well. With that strong commitment to our national defense and a willingness to use American power to advance American security, our allies have also stepped up as never before. Since 2016, our NATO allies have increased their contribution to our common defense by more than $130 billion. History teaches that weakness arouses evil. And our history has proven that a strong America deters it. Our administration has always understood that if you want peace, prepare for war. And with that renewed American strength, we've defended this nation and America's vital national interests around the world. I'm proud to say with just a few days left in this administration that this is the first administration in decades not to get America into a new war. But all along the way, with that renewed American strength, we stood with our allies and stood up to our enemies. To ensure peace and stability requires just two things, a strong American military and a willingness to act to defend America's interests around the world. And under this administration, we done just that. We took historic steps first to stand with our most cherished ally. We moved the American Embassy to Jerusalem, the capital of the State of Israel. We recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And in the aftermath, now for the first time in 26 years, four Arab countries have recognized Israel's right to exist. And under our administration, we've taken the fight to radical Islamic terrorists on our terms on their soil. During these last four years, the armed forces of the United States captured the last inch of territory controlled by ISIS. And strike fighters stationed right here at NAS Lamore were in the fight from early on, hitting ISIS, giving terrorists no quarter, driving them from their strongholds. With the courage of our armed forces, I'm proud to report, now more than a year ago, we crushed their caliphate, captured the last inch of territory under the black flag of ISIS, and took down their leader without one American casualty. And we've stood up to the leading state sponsor of terror. Withdrawing from the Iran nuclear deal, we've strengthened our alliances in the region and isolated Iran as never before. And when the most dangerous terrorists in the world threatened American forces in the region, our armed forces took action, and Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, is gone. Thanks to American leadership, a more peaceful Middle East is within our sights. And with renewed American strength, we embraced our role as leader of the free world, whether it be in the global war on terror or manning the ramparts of freedom in Europe or the Asia Pacific. The men and women of the United States Navy have been that global force for good every step of the way. And a strong and ready Navy is more important than ever before. 
as a new American administration prepares to take office, we do well to remember, as Americans, that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, and that a free and open Indo-Pacific is essential to our prosperity, our security, and the vitality of freedom in the world. After generations where America and our allies defended the freedom of navigation and the interests of free nations across the Asia Pacific, today the People's Republic of China is determined to expand Beijing's influence across the region through military provocations and debt diplomacy. And so I urge the incoming administration to stay the course do what we've done, stand up to Chinese aggression and trade abuses, stand strong for a free and open Indo-Pacific, and put America and our freedom-loving allies first. And I know the United States Navy will continue to stand strong in the Indo-Pacific and all over the world. In the years ahead, the American people and the free world will rely on the strength of the United States Navy more than ever to safeguard the free and open flow of commerce and our ideals on the seven seas. And so on behalf of your Commander-in-Chief, let me offer you this admonition. In these challenging times across the wider world, be vigilant, mind your mission, respect the unified chain of command, take care of each other, and never doubt that every decision you make, every action you take, matters to the security of the American people. Give America your best every day. The American people are counting on you because we know we can. And as you stand a post, I can assure you, the American people will be behind you 100 percent. So as I close, let me say again, on behalf of my family and a grateful nation, Thank you for your service. America is the freest and strongest nation in the history of the world. And you secure that freedom. And you are that strength. You step forward in a calling where you've decided to count our lives as more important than your own. And just like generations that have gone before, you did so knowing that the sailor and the soldier do not bear the sword in vain. I want to assure you the American people understand the risk you take every day. But know this. You do not bear that burden alone. Wherever you are called to serve, wherever you are deployed, I promise you, you will carry with you the strength and pride of this nation and the prayers of millions of Americans who will pray in the ancient words of the psalmist that no harm would befall you, no disaster would come near your tent, and that as you serve here and around the world, that his faithfulness will be your shield. You are the strength and the pride of the American people and a source of great pride to our little family. And whether you serve on land or at sea or in the skies above, just know that every day, in homes large and small, around dinner tables and at gatherings, at places of worship and in quiet moments, the American people pray for each and every one of you. They give thanks for your selfless courage 
and wish you fair winds and following seas. So thank you for the privilege of being with you today. And as my time in office draws to a close, allow me to thank you for the privilege of serving as your vice president these past four years. It's been the greatest honor of my life. And it's been a special privilege to serve men and women like all of you, the members of the armed forces of the United States. And I truly believe as long as we have men and women like you with the courage and the selflessness to step forward and serve, as long as we have heroes willing to put your lives on the line, as long as we have patriots willing to defend our nation, I know our country will be safe. Our freedom will be secure, and the best days for the greatest nation on earth are yet to come. So may God bless the men and women of Naval Air Station Lemoore, here and deployed. May God bless you with his protection and with that fighter spirit. May God bless all those serving in our armed forces. And God bless America.